Dr. Shashi Priya. Uh, she is going to speak on female partner evaluation. She is MS, OBG, MBBS, member of ESAR, IFS and FOXI. She has conducted seminars and teaching classes for various clinicians through IMA and fellowship program. She has an experience in uh, fertility consultant at 49 and is uh, assistant professor at Malaredi Medical College for Women. She was senior resident at Siddipet Medical College. So over to you, Dr. Sheshi. Thank you, ma'am. Very good morning and uh, welcome to the session. So without any delay, let me uh, start my session with uh, evaluation of an infertile female. So uh, coming to this topic, so why is female important? Obviously because uh, our uh, speaker Dr. Anusha has elicited very well about uh, why male is important. Now coming to female partner, around 40 to 50 percent of the cases of infertility, uh, so female is responsible. So in this uh, age, pertaining to the age, if the age is less than 30 years, the incidence is 1 in 8, that accounts to 13%, and if the age is more than 30 years, it is 1 in 5 people, that is 33% according to CDC. Now, according to WHO, 10% of the reproductive age females are inflicted with infertility and subfertility. So in India, according to NIH, 8% of the currently married women are infertile, out of which 5.8% have secondary infertility. So when to evaluate now and how to evaluate is the question. So according to ACOG and ASRM, so if the woman is less than 35 years and fail to conceive after one year of attempts uh, for the pregnancy, then evaluation should be done. So and the evaluation should be expedited if the age is more than 35 years uh, to six months. And if the age is more than 40 years, definitely Im immediate evaluation should be done. And uh, if the female partner has a history of any gynecological conditions earlier, then definitely immediate evaluation should be done by the first line uh, doctor that is obstetrician or gynecologist. Then coming to our um, how to evaluate. So coming to this, basic evaluation should be done taking the history, physical examination, local examination and pertaining to the etiology of our infertility. So history, so what is important? So in the history, history should be taken forward uh, with the conditions pertaining to infertility. So that is age of menarche when we are going to the menstrual history and uh, the cycle length and any dysmenorrhea associated with it and any positive signs of ovulation that is cervical mucus changes should be inquired of. Then again, coming to the history, personal history, especially uh, coital frequency, any dyspareunia and uh, a number of uh, attempts for the pregnancy and any history of contraception should be elicited. Then along with this, uh, we are going to the past obstetric history, which should include uh, the gravity, parity, and uh, attempts for the pregnancy, uh, la uh, for the previous pregnancy, and history of any uh, previous uh, fertility treatments and any complications associated with the first pregnancy. So along with this, now we have to elicit uh, the family history if, uh, any treatments have been taken for the siblings or history of PCO running in the uh, family and again we have to uh, rule out the surgical history pertaining to especially any abdominal surgeries or pelvic surgeries previously done and uh, previous medical history is also important for us to rule out any thyroid abnormalities and any history of TB which is really relevant in our case. So coming to uh, local examination Definitely, per abdomen examination should be done to any rule out any abdominal masses and uh, local examination, that is pelvic examination should be done to rule out any masses and size of the uterus, any uh, mass occupying lesions in the caldi sac and the mobility of the uterus should be elicited uh, to rule out any PID. Then cervix, uh, per, definitely per speculum examination should be done to rule out any uh, cervical polyps conditions are there. Then. Coming to our uh, evaluation uh, part of uh, thyroid, see, when we are doing head to toe examination pertaining to fertility, thyroid is the most important thing. So, uh, see, ASRM guidelines and uh, European Thyroid Association have said that, so when the thyroid level is less than, is uh, uh, more than 4%, for more than 4 international units, 
then there is chances of recurrent uh, uh, pregnancy losses in the first trimester and subclinical thyroid, uh, subclinical hypothyroidism is also one of the cause for uh, implantation failures. So definitely the values when we are uh, evaluating a female partner should be less than 2.5 and if it is more than 2.5 definitely 25 or micrograms or along with the BMI the dose should be calculated and it should be treated. So these are few guidelines uh, which is set by the ASRM and ETA. So we can go through it. Then uh, coming to CBC, anemia is also one of the factor. So follicular development is a stage of rapid pro cell proliferation and increased steroidogenesis. Both cell proliferation and steroidogenesis require ATP energy for mRNA and protein synthesis. So follicle development greatly increases the iron demand. So definitely, if uh, we have iron deficiency anemia, it is going to cause any ovulatory dysfunction. So anemia should be treated. So uh, this uh, puts an end to our physical examination. And the more important thing is BMI. Definitely, height, weight, and BMI should be calculated. If the BMI is more, uh, then the fertility chance decreases. And fecundity rates are also very less. So again, uh, when we are seeing the skin, definitely signs of any uh, hyperandrogenism, hirsutism, acne, these all should be ruled out. So even when vitals are very important, blood pressure pulse should be monitored, which uh, rules out any subclinical hypothyroidism. Then coming to the local examination, that is uh, our reproductive system, ovarian factor, uh, tubal factor, uterine factor and cervical factor should be elicited. So in the ovarian factor, so what are we going to look at the ovaries? Definitely ovary is the one which will give us the eggs. So ovulation, uh, so these tests are generally done. Uh, so basal body temperature and LH kits. Basal body temperature, it is tedious, so we are not going to do it. And LH kits, definitely, if the patient is uh, well versed with the uh, fertility period, then we can recommend uh, giving the LH kits and asking them to evaluate. Then mid-cycle progesterone, yes, it can be done, but not routinely because it is very tedious for the patient to come on day 21 and to check it. So transvaginal ultrasonography, definitely it is a part and parcel of our treatments. So when we are looking at the ovary, uh, so we have to start a follicular medley doing on day two. So on day two, uh, we have to see the ovarian volume, uh, number of AFC. So antral follicular count, uh, normal antral follicular count is uh, 8 to 10 per ovary. More than 20 is regarded as PCO and uh, less than 4 per ovary or combinedly less than 8 is poor ovarian reserve. So along with this, if we are doing any uh, blood test, so then definitely combined E2 and FSH should be done. Not a single thing. Either uh, doing individually E2 or individually FSH on random day of the cycle doesn't fetch our purpose then we have to go for AMH. So AMH is a hormone released by uh, granulosa cells of preantral follicles. So it gives us a rough idea about the ovarian reserve. So when we do a scan, so we do elicit any hemorrhagic cyst, endometriotic cyst, CL cyst, or uh, luteinized unruptured follicle, which will add to the treatment in the next cycle. So next is the tube. Tube is very important for us because the fertilization does uh, happen in the tube only. So how are we going to evaluate the tube? So conventional methods of HSG are there and uh, gold standard techniques of laparoscopy are there. But sonohistosalpingography appears to be inexpensive, minimally uh, invasive, quick and no risk of ionizing radiation and well tolerated. And uh, it is uh, even good in determining the uh, uterine cavity and it can be performed at the time of uh, ultrasound in the place of HSE and laparoscopy. So when uh, this uh, tubal patency tests are deferred are, when the patient is having any signs of infection or previous history of PID, this should be uh, deferred because it causes the dissemination. Then uh, laparoscopy, definitely we can go, uh, go for laparoscopy. It will give us an additional uh, uh, preference of uh, adicheolysis or any endometriosis that can be treated as well. I'm just concluding with the session. So extra factors. So uterine factors, definitely when we are doing an ultrasonography, any Mullerian abnormalities should be ruled out, fibroids, endometriosis, Asherman's, adenomyosis, and uterine polyps should be ruled out. So coming to the last and the first part, that is the cervical uh, testing. 
So when we are putting a speculum, what is important for us? The cervical polyps, we have to check for cervical stenosis and hostile cervical mucus because these small things, if we uh, evaluate, then natural conception will be easy for them if there doesn't have any other abnormality. So take home messages, E2 should be tested along with FSH and thyroid screening should be done. AMH is an indicator for ovarian reserve, not for pregnancy outcomes. So uh, according to the new ASRM guidelines, infertility tests that should not be ordered routinely are laparoscopy for unexplained infertility, advanced sperm function testing, postcoital testing, thromophilia testing, karyotyping, endometrial biopsy, and prolactin. Thank you. <laughs>